if it's within a few couple hundred bucks, I mean, the guys can be like, yeah, it's no problem. Sometimes they'll they'll go, well, you know, you want me to come down 500 bucks? Why don't you just come up 500 bucks? And it's like, well, I mean, I, I can't really do that because I, I, where am I going to find that 500? Anyway, so I get I get as close as I can. And then I call the, the contractor and I say, hey, listen, I got up to um, 94,000. So there's, there's about $12,000 worth of that. So we're actually now within like six or $7,000 or whatever that comes out to, right? You know, let's talk about this. If we can't get any closer than $6,000, um, because I just, there's nothing, nowhere else that I have room to go, then I'll just say, well, you know, I, I can't do any more than that. Um, I don't know what to tell you about that extra 6,000 bucks other than we just can't pay for those things. If the insured wants to do those upgrades, you know, or whatever, that's on them. This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Adjuster TV Plus. This, the reconciliation thing I think is, I feel like that's like a State Farm lingo. Yeah. Correct me if I, I think that's, they're kind of the ones. And, and because they're such a big company, I think they kind of, they, they do have a, an influence on like what everybody else calls stuff. Basically, reconciliation is negotiating with the contractor to try to get a, 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 at least a, an agreed scope uh, of repairs, right? When I was at, uh, Liberty or at Safeco, um, they wanted us to try to get agreed uh, agreed cost of repairs. They wanted us to like, hey, let's let's get this to where we both agree on the number. But I think for IAs, uh, by and large, especially on CAT, um, if you're doing cleanup, um, you, you're kind of you're bound by your estimating guidelines, right? So, like what Andy was just saying, he's like, you know, uh, it could be you, you show up at a, at a, on a reinspection as a cleanup adjuster and the original adjuster missed all the awnings on the back. There's a patio cover. There was siding on the back side of the garage. There was a shed. And it's, those are, I mean, that is the easiest, easiest thing in the world to do because they're like, Oh, just add that stuff to the estimate and bada bang. Well, magically my, our estimates match now. Right. Um, if you're doing a, a lot more complex stuff, like, uh, like a large loss of water, right. So where you've got kitchens and appliances and flooring and subfloor and and you know cont continuous flooring and ceilings and walls and you know it's getting into other parts of the house etc you may have additional living expense they may have expenses on there for um you know well the you know the insured has to have all their their personal property out of the living room and the dining room and the the tv room because those rooms have to be gutted and redone and and so we need to we need to have a contents a uh, subcontractor come out and they're going to load it, offload it, box everything up and load it off onto an on site storage or an off site storage or whatever, like a pod or something. So you're going to have like a lot of moving pieces, right? And this is one of the reasons why new people don't get, normally get like daily work is because they're, they, they can get super complicated really right. fast. And if you don't know those things, you're going you're gonna to struggle, right? Um, but if, if I'm like, the original, if, if I, it may be my claim originally, right? If I'm looking at my original estimate or the original estimate from the adjuster, and it says for a, a loss like that, it's seventy five thousand dollars, right? And then we get the contractor's estimate, and it's one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. While we're twenty five, thirty, forty thousand dollars, right? Something like that difference. That's a lot, right? What I would, what I used to do um, is, and I, I don't know that I've ever seen any training on this. Uh, honestly, they just said, Hey, just, you know, just figure out a way to get those to match or to go negotiate with that contractor. And, you know, it wasn't like, you know, take this online trainer and go to this uh, contractor negotiation school. It just doesn't exist. Um, although we are kind of working on some stuff. So, um, but basically what I would do is I would print out both copies and I get a red pen. Right. And I would say, I would have my estimate or the original adjuster's estimate. Usually if it was the original, if, if it was in a not my original claim. I would rescope the whole thing, get measurements in the whole, because it could be a difference in measurements, right? And because the adjuster, the original adjuster was scoping from their photos and they just made measurements up because they didn't get everything. They weren't, they didn't have a good system for it, right? So a lot of times, some of the stuff can be made up, the differences can be made up in the measurements alone, right? While the roof is actually 37 squares, not 21 squares, right? So, and that's significant. Um, and that, I mean, you've seen that, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, as much as I have. So, I will remeasure everything, rescope everything, and then I'll compare what I come up with to what the original adjuster had, and then I'll compare both of the, you know, I'll try to, you know, make those kind of copacetic, and then I'll figure out what, you know, I'll, I'll go through line by line. A lot of contractors will use Xactimate, um, 
I'll go through their estimate line by line and say, and you just take your red pen and you're like, um, I can't pay for that. I can't pay for a porta potty. You know, I mean, it's, it's some, it's, you know, there's a lot of times there are little things, right? Mm -hmm. It may be that they have, uh, Five thousand dollars worth of final cleaning, right? Which a lot of the cleaning is included with the, with the line items already, so you can't really include something like that, right? So you start going through with it with with your red pen, and I'll I'll make a note, like I'll make put a X or a check mark or a box or a, somehow mark that line item. And I'll put a note next to it saying, uh, you know, code upgrade or it's a uh, insured does not already have ice and water shield can't pay for ice and water, right? Because it's they don't there's no code for it there's no they don't required to have it and they don't have it now and the contractor has that on the rest of it a lot of times it's stuff like that they just you just can't pay for right so you go find all that stuff and then re-add everything up and see how you come out and a lot of times that makes up will usually make up a pretty significant difference between the two and then from there it's like well i'll get it as i'll, I'll say well i could probably pay for that i'll do all this long before i ever talk to the contractor right then i'll try to get my my estimate i'll like look for places where i can massage things and i'm like i'm looking at the house and like yeah there's no way he's gonna be able to get a truck down here to offload that stuff so i'll give him a couple thousand bucks for access and i'll do this and i'll do that and you know whatever right and then i'll get within depending on what it is it's usually if it's within a few a couple hundred bucks i mean the guy's gonna be like yeah it's no problem sometimes they'll they'll go well, you know, you want me to come down 500 bucks, why don't you just come up 500 bucks? And it's like, well, I mean, I, I can't really do that because I, I, where am I going to find that 500? Anyway, so I get I get as close as I can and then I call the, the contractor and I say, hey, listen, um, I, I identify myself, right? Usually when you do a reinspection, you're meeting with the contractor anyway. Um, so a lot of times this happens in the driveway. Um, and then I'll say, here's what I came up with. I added a bunch of line items. I, I double-checked all these measurements or you were with me. We double-checked these measurements. We found that there was you know, whatever differences. And we've got those kind of figured out. I got up to, um, 94,000. Um, and there's, there's probably about $12,000 worth of things on yours, um, that we just can't pay for because of our estimated guidelines in the policy. And some of those are, um, upgrades, um, that are, that the insured wanted to make that we can't, that, you know, it's not a code upgrade or whatever they wanted, uh, a more expensive roof, right? Or they wanted a more expensive flooring or whatever. So there's there's about twelve thousand dollars worth of that. So we're actually now within like six or seven thousand dollars or whatever that comes out to, right? You know, let's talk about this. Like, so you know, I, I'll I can hand you this or email it to you or whatever. And so then we have a conversation about those things and see if we can't, you know, if we can't get any closer than six thousand um, dollars, because I just there's nothing nowhere else that I have room to go. Then I'll just say, well, you know. I can't do any more than that. Um, I don't know what to tell you about that extra 6,000 bucks other than we just can't pay for those things. If the insured wants to do those upgrades, you know, or whatever, that's on them, right? And then you're pretty much done, right? If you wanna watch the rest of this episode where I answer other questions ad-free, as well as get access to a members only segment question and answer, head on over to adjustertvplus.com and become a member right now.